Hello and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. My name's Amy, aka Warp Fiend, and today I'm joined by uh, Autumn Witch, as usual, but I've also hello. got my brother here. Hey. Uh, Luke, say hello. <laughs> hello. So what we're talking about today is the Adepticon reveals. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of them. We put out a video yesterday on the... Um, uh, the Age of Sigmar 4th edition launch box and today we're going to go through everything else that was revealed. So before we come back to this lady here let's let's start off with some of the teasers. So first off there was Necromunda and we had this little video here and it's just you can see some silhouettes of some things they look kind of technologically advanced but that one kind of looks like it's got a rat on its head, or yeah. Well, we've uh, we've seen that rat folk are uh, making their way to Necromunda. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, there's a little kind of scroll down through the earth to this uh, like sealed vault or something. Uh, I I very much wanted um, to hear something about. Uh, uh, scavies and like the sump and all those underhive bits so maybe it could be going that way yeah well nice. some some more muties yep yep always love to see a good mutant gotta love a green and purple color palette as well <laughs> oh yes great fun to paint <laughs> so moving on we'll just quickly discuss the heresy because it's it, it's Mechanicum, the it cult is, Mechanicus, it's whatever. It's absolutely Mechanicum. Um, we've heard There's nothing we've heard else talk, it could be. Yeah, we've heard talk for a while that uh, the Mechanicum is uh, on its way, and well, here it is. Yeah, I think a lot of um, well, certainly my friend who had the um, automatons, the uh, uh, like classic pattern ones. Uh, th there was no support for those in Heresy for years and years, and yeah. uh, I think it's it's about time they got like proper love. Mm. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be really cool um, because with Heresy, you kind of up until Solar Auxilia came out, you basically had like everything was just like one flavor of Space Marine. So oh, going yes. in and um including uh mechanicum and we've got the solar auxilia already yeah uh, i think it's it's good that they're still expanding the setting there's a lot of youtubers who think that heresy is dead it's gonna just stay it's like <laughs> a niche game but no it's getting expansions and i'm pretty sure a lot of these um mechanicus models are going to be proxied in 40k as well Oh, because, absolutely, yeah. Because the quality of the Heresy miniatures has... Mm. It's been wiping I mean, the floor with the, with the main 40k range. Yeah, I mean, you're almost definitely going to see um, a Heresy-specific variant of Skitari. Uh, obviously, there was the Forge World conversion kit before. Yeah. I think it was conversion kit, or there might have been whole resin models. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was a bit of both. I think there were some like upgrade kits and... Mm. Um, like a few Forge World exclusive models. But, but yeah, yeah, it'd be great to see that kind of heresy style brought over to the ad mech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving on from the teasers to the things we actually did get to see. First off, let's talk Kill Team. Ooh, yes. Yeah. And, and this was, we predicted this one. Well, I think everyone knew what this yeah. was going to be. And we have... The Leagues of Votan versus Gene Stealer Cult. And, and it's a pretty hench box yeah. as well, given what you get for the Gene Stealer mm -hmm. side of it. But I do yeah, love these kind of like jackets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's just very pioneering look they've got to them, like they're out there on the fringes, like yeah. it's, rather than being, you know, the main battle guys in their armour. Yeah. These, these are the ones that are kind of like operating on like on the frontiers of space or whatever. Yeah, I love these more than the um, 
than like the main 40k range mm. but then i'm a sucker yeah. for anything in like a leather trench coat so but, oh it's just they just look a bit more flavorful i think like not yeah full, in full body armor just like uh, having a nice jacket and everything to them to just have a more unique personnel feel to each of them yeah. oh definitely yeah and i love this one's like a, a one of the man of iron things what do they call them in this like robots oh. they've got like a special name for them but I've, I've forgotten what it is it's something kin i think i forget I, I, as a, a running theme on this channel you'll know that we can <laughs> never remember the names of these uh specific <laughs> random things but moving on anyway that's the votan we get some proper brood brothers yeah mm-hmm. now uh, i'm wondering if uh the 40k rules for this team are going to be in the Dream Stealer Cults Codex or in the Imperial Guard Codex. <laughs> because, well. strangely, um, Dream Stealer Cults are one thing and then Brood Brothers are a sub-faction, or at least in the rules as they are mm. now. Uh, are Brood, currently? That's Brood Brothers are a sub-faction of Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum. Oh. So, I mean, that go, it shows how, I mean, going off topic for a second, but it shows how easy it would be to do, um, like, Traitor Guard in the uh, Astra Militarum. Yes, so that, yeah. But, you can see that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've always, like, previous editions, Brood Brothers have, have fairly much just been an extra addition into yeah. the codex and as yeah. gene stealer courts have got more vehicles of their own it does make a little less sense that mm. they have like such access to astra militarum stuff it's but, a very cool yeah. thing in the law but like not yeah. thoroughly reflected in the models <laughs> it's like yeah and i think these because before you just had the cadian kit and you had a gene stealer cult upgrade kit with some heads and some little yeah. lockets and that and these ones are actually more kind of integrated. Yeah, definitely. They look absolutely fantastic. Mm. <laughs> I think the colour scheme is a little close to the traitor guard in the like the I black mean, te- and red armour. Technically, armor. they are traitor guard. Yeah, they, they yeah. are heretics. <laughs> Not they... really of their own volition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd paint these in a different colour if I was going to get some of them myself, just to differentiate, because mm. I really love the this scheme for the traitor guard, the black and red, yeah. it's just so mm. perfect. I yeah. love this kill team, I, I, I don't know if it's going to be an unpopular opinion or not, but I just feel like they could have left the patriarch and things out of this and just... Mm, yeah, <laughs> so it says like... Um, it's not uncommon to see these uh, um, joining with kill teams. I so it obviously it's very means... uncommon to see the Patriarch going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does. <laughs> I mean, apparently you can't take the entire team in one. Mm-hmm. You have to, like, leave certain operatives behind if you want to take one of these. So yeah. there's a bit more flexibility. But mm. what I'm hoping this hints at is being able to take characters in Kill Team again. Hmm. Yep, that would be interesting, yeah. It can easily get overbal- like unbalanced when you do start introducing characters, so, yeah. so long as it's done well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's also these bits of scenery, which are the little plasma generators, and they're okay, but they're not the plasma generators from Dawn of War, which I was kind of disappointed by. Mm. They've got a similar vibe, I guess, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's Kill Team then. Uh, next up, we have the other 40k thing. Thing I'm really excited about. Really? I wouldn't <laughs> have thought you'd, you'd be excited about this. We have, well, we have two new Chaos models, but they they showed off in the video a lot of uh, Chaos kits that are already out. Like, yeah. look at these. This is what you're getting in the bye, box. Bye. <laughs> the, the release yeah. was a little bit padded. Um, for two guys, but there's the uh, the battle boxes as well that they're doing. Mm. So I want to say these two lords are beautiful. The multi kit regular lord and the multi kit multi part uh, jump pack lord. Yeah, they're both lovely kits, and we'll get a bit closer in a minute. But I think the way that they have chosen to release these in two different battle yeah. boxes, yeah, <laughs> that it's just. It's, I think they're 
taking the like, piss a bit. Yeah. Be like hundred pound plus kits. Yes. As well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean they, they were saying in the reveals as well, oh, of course, you could buy both boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going off to my money Any tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much so. Um, I think, like, just if they could have put out one box and the other one yeah. just got released, that would be great. I mean, it's going to be that these uh, models get individual releases, Mm. as yes. well but you know for like it's going to be like three or four months maybe before that happens oh, so yeah. i mean i don't understand why they're releasing battle forces at this time of year <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. why why didn't they announce these just before christmas because I know, I know. they would Very have flown strange. off the shelves <laughs> but i mean obviously they, it means they look that quite the, uh, reasonably sized battle forces I'd yeah say. it seems a fair oh, number yeah. of models yeah and second- Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, uh, and uh, battle forces they do tend to uh, go out to like the um, like the third party sites. So if you're yeah. with Element or the Outpost or something, you'll get like a fifteen twenty percent off on them. Mm-hmm. I mean, Element still has some of the um, Astra Militarum um, battle forces left over from Christmas. Help! They've even got copies of Leviathan still. Um, yes. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, I think it's good that you can buy a battle force, it's basically an army in a box, but when you've already got, like, those models, and you just want, like, the one new thing, I think mm-hmm. we're going to have to wait a bit longer. But, of course, this also hints that we're going to be getting Codex Chaos Space Marines very soon. Mm-hmm. And Yes, uh, yes. One look at that will um, let us know if we're going to be getting Emperor's Children anytime mm-hmm. soon. Um, well, nice. rumours are it's going to be this edition, so <laughs> I think a lot of people are holding out hope for that. Yeah. Yeah, so just going back to the models quickly, oh, I love the lightning claws, mm. the dual lightning claws, that's such a cool look. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's plenty of options on these, I think it was option of a plasma pistol, there's an axe, I believe, uh, also a bolt pistol and... Yeah, um, but who, who gives the a Chaos Lord pistol. a bolt pistol? I mean, it's... That that just seems the most useless option ever, to be yeah. honest. I can't see many people choosing to take that. Um, the only circumstance I can see that is just basically if it's someone who doesn't know the law yeah. and just literally thinks, oh, that looks cool. I mean, so, it's something for the bits box. Yes, it, yeah, yeah you, you could stick it on a normal legionary or something. but. <laughs> and so you have the, the regular lord, so you've got chain axe a maul or a hammer um and a plasma pistol or a power fist i love this yeah. loadout it's like a, almost like a baby abaddon yeah yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> very cool i just love the the kind of blunt weapons for chaos it's nice having more of those because back in the day i remember the chaos kits didn't really have a lot of options when it came to that it was like you got your sword you got your axe like maybe if you're lucky, like a power fist or that, but no, thunder hammer or whatever. This, this is a demon hammer. Yeah. More badass and a yeah. more. <laughs> and again, it's more bits for the bits box, which is mm-hmm. always good. Oh yeah, can't complain. Or, or you can magnetize them. Yeah, yeah, that could be an option. I don't think they mentioned on the preview site here, but it is mentioned on the stream about the uh, combat patrol as well for the mm. Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, there was also a new combat patrol for Chaos Space Marines that they showed. I can't remember the contents off the top of my head. I was hoping to refresh my memory. I was going to say, that here. would have been great if like one, at least one of the Lords was in that one. <laughs> like, you know. You'd think, yeah, but it, obviously it, it's got um, the Master of Possession, hasn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. But yeah. I think that one had, did that, no, Possessed her in that one, so I, I don't know what was in that, that uh, box. We'll have to talk about it uh, when the Codex comes out. Yeah. I mean, the Codexes are coming pretty thick and fast in this edition, which is a good thing. Yeah. But it also um, kind of makes me feel like we're going to be getting two Codexes per, at least every major force. So, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. I can see Space Marines getting a a second one, even though they really don't need them. (laughs) Yeah, it's likely to happen. Um, 
But anyway, moving on, we mm-hmm. have Warcry. The next Warcry set has been shown off. Brian nice. and Bone. And the tree. Just to... The tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, the tree is very cool. But first of all, I think uh, we have the, yes, oh. the Bone Reapers. You got this Centaur thing. Um, you see, now, a lot of, there was a, a, a meme going around on the internet um, a while back about yeah. what does a centaur look like with no skin, trying to work <laughs> out how the uh, the rib cage worked. And, yes. uh, yeah, it, it appears uh, that that meme has been answered. <laughs> yeah, so it is literally like a pelvis between the shoulder blades. Yeah. Which is an interesting choice. I don't know. Like, it's a cool model. I I don't I think I could there's just something off about it and I don't quite know what it is something that doesn't quite appeal to me what does appeal to me is the hounds the hounds are awesome yeah they're I think, cool I think these are super cool yeah <laughs> I don't know what it is in in the centaur that just doesn't spark anything for me it's a very strange thing when they were explaining the lore of these models though they're saying like Hmm. Um, the Bone Reapers never run away, which they don't to the law, but they're saying if yes. they do run away, then they're punished and turned into these kind of constructs. It's like... Hmm. I, <laughs> I wasn't aware that the average Bone Reaper had enough free will for that. I'm not <laughs> quite sure how that works. I, I thought they were all thralls, but apparently a, some of them get punished. It's, it's a cool idea, like weird it's kind so of cool. punishment being turned into animal creatures, but... Yeah, yeah, I, I like I like the uh, idea, um, and yeah, I, I really like most of the models in it. I just the central just leaves me cold. Yeah, these, these are even pretty cool. They look cool. Think. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They're kind of I like mean, wingless morgasts. I mean, yes. the, cent- the centaur itself could look better from different angles. Mm. It could because do, yeah, I think there's something about the pose from this angle yeah. that's just like yeah, I think. Once he's on his side and you can see like the whip crackling a yeah. bit more. It's I a mean, bit more if, it, yeah. if his right arm was like swung out a little bit, I think it it might look a bit yes. more dynamic. Yes, definitely. Um, what they're oh, up against soon. though, the corrupted Sylvaneth. So we have uh, oh, don't ask me to give all the names of all these <laughs> swarm sages who have the uh, like beehives basically growing out the head and like these. Thorn tentacle hair thing. I mean, weaponized vespids <laughs> are kind of something you'd expect from the Tau, but yes, <laughs> it's a cool model. I'm all it? for it. <laughs> I yeah. I don't I don't get a lot of the silver nest stuff to be honest. Like it, I can kind of see it's cool, but it it doesn't really like hit that hit that note for me. But I know a lot of people do love it, so. Yeah. There are a lot of the rumor engine images solved in the this set as well. Yes, like yes. The beehives and things were very beehive. recent. Yeah. Obviously, like th- these are pretty cool uh, Sylvanet of models, but uh, like I say, I, I probably wouldn't be getting them. But uh, to each their own, I guess. Yeah, I mean they look like they could be fun to paint. Yeah, I do really like the fully tree ones, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, as someone that prefers dry brushing over edge highlighting, I <laughs> think uh, this army lends itself very well to that kind of painting style. Yep, yep. And we also had the big uh, <laughs> mimic tree thing, and this is so <laughs> cool. Like, even looking at this picture on my screen, I have to, like, just get closer to the screen to make sure it's not like a... a cartoon or something yeah it oh, really dude. has this unreal quality to it <laughs> i really want Warcry scenery it's just i want to play Warcry to be fair but like yeah scenery like this makes me want to get into it <laughs> oh god they've done some cracking scenery in previous Warcry sets and i just think kind of the modularity of it all and kind of the multi-levels and all the walkways and stuff like that has just been an absolute pleasure yeah Mm-hmm. So that's Briar and Bone. Um, obviously, the the oh, I can't remember the name of it now, but the current Warcry box, I believe, 
Was that previewed recently, or is that still to come? Oh, it's still to come out, yeah. The uh, the one with the uh, Luminous Realm Lords and the Nighthorn. That's the one, yeah. yeah. No sign of that yet, but obviously GW does preview these things a bit in advance, so yeah. fingers crossed we hear about that soon. Moving on then, we have Underworlds and a new season in the Wintermoor. So, obviously... It's about time for a new season. Uh, we just got out of, what was it, the uh, Death Gorge. And these models. These models. <laughs> yeah. I do love it, but I can't shake it's the uh, kids stacked up in a trench coat to make yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very much a Vincent Adult Man type scenario. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I did hear them say, like, it was a father on his son's back or a son on his father's back or something and I, I I couldn't remember why in particular but he seems to be dressed up as like some kind of storm cast like kind of in tribute to one maybe um and they've just got a very kind of dark soulsy look like yeah. it's just like kind of really grim you know I've been playing a lot of dark souls three at the minute that's my current one and um yeah, th- these could just be in that game, honestly. So apparently these are all meant to be regular humans that have been touched by lightning, and they yeah. believe themselves to be hot, sacred to Sigmar. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like the equivalent of uh, just like zealots or whatever, mm. but um, they've been caught by a stormcast lightning when they, they zoom down and burnt by it or whatever. It's it's just a really cool origin story and really cool miniatures. And yet yeah, against them we have oh. Flesh Eater Courts <laughs> getting more love. <laughs> they have been getting a lot of love of late. Yep. Yeah, and I think these are really cool. I love the, the kind of bat one. Yeah. Very kind of baby Vargeist look. Mm. And then this butcher one, the butcher is amazing with like flesh hooks hanging over him, mm. and the 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 kind of uh, uh... he will prepare a grand feast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's um, that's the winter moor. So I'm looking forward to that one definitely. Always nice to see the underworld war bands. They always bring something a bit new to the table. Yeah. And... Oh, God, I want these ones so bad. <laughs> the things I could do with them. I'd be very tempted to go halves with you on this one, then. If you yep, know. yep, go for it. <laughs> That's our plan. Right, moving on then, we have the old world, and everyone knew the dwarfs were coming. Dwarfs, I love the dwarfs. I may so have mentioned have... it once or twice on the channel, <laughs> but I love dwarfs. So we have the book for Dwarven Mountain Holds, and obviously they've come with them a bunch of the older stuff has been re-released. You've got the, the you just regular dwarf warriors, your quarrelers and thunderers, um, your gyrocopters and the gyro bomber. And you get the new stuff too. And I believe they said this guy was, I believe this guy, yes, it comes in plastic. This is a new plastic mm. dwarf lord on just being carried on a shield. I still can't believe he's just not another chunkier custodian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a fantastic model, though. I, I really love this. It's going to be like oh, I know yeah. there's a lot of dwarf fans out of there out there who probably weren't even expecting any new plastic models out of this release, and uh, have been absolutely spoiled rotten with this. Yeah, I mean, I I think that. Um... All of the uh, the returning armies for the old world are going to get a new something. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, also, as well as that, we have the Dwarf Thane. Uh, wait, is that? No. So what's this one? Oh, oh, this is the um, alternate option for that, I believe. Yeah. You, you get one, one that's held by the shield bearers and the other on foot and... Yep, that's this has a very kind of almost a chaos dwarf look, I think. <gasps> don't, don't tease me. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, it will be a good conversion opportunity there, I'm sure. 
And yeah, then then you have the resin thing with handgun, and you have Ungrim Iron Fist as as like a youngster in this one. Big ginger dwarf. I love a big ginger dwarf. <laughs> yep, yep. It's interesting to see like. I think they were talking about, yeah, this is the first of the characters that people will know from the old world period that they're bringing in. Yeah. Um, but obviously, like, they're going to keep on gradually introducing their younger selves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when it comes to the elves, um, it's not going to be as big a, as yes, big a thing. Yes, yeah. Because they're immortal. They've been around forever. But, yeah. Exactly. But, but to see that, you know, that line of continuity from here, because, I mean, the setting is a prequel to the old world mm-hmm. as we know it. So, yeah. yeah, gives them a bit of wiggle room as well um, yeah. to expand the timeline and develop it onwards. Yeah, you can see here, these are all the kits that they're bringing back. And, uh, yep, they're all... The dwarfs, they were cool yep. kits back in the day. I think there's cool kits now. You know, not the most detailed. They're not modern ones. But ah, these troops, like, you can't go wrong with them. They're classics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've already painted up a whole uh, unit of my, uh, like, 30-year-old plastic dwarves um, mm-hmm. in preparation for this. So, yeah, this yeah. is one of the... One of the two armies I've been looking forward to for the old world. Nice, the other being nice. high elves, but I actually have a high elf army. But here I don't actually have much in the way of dwarves. Mm. So, yeah, I am really looking forward to these. Cool, cool. Well, we also have the uh, like command squad, what they call the the command set here, yeah. and then there's some like metal kits as well. Uh, stuff like the Grudge Thrower, the Bolt Thrower, Flame Cannon, Anvil of Doom, and some Master Engineers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this model in particular, I I remember very fondly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen so many digital scans of this on, like, Cult 3D, and I've been thinking, oh, shall I pay, like, five quid and get this? Yes, and yeah. It? Or do I wait for the official model? Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, there's the more made to order stuff, and uh, I believe made to order just a couple of days ago we saw the uh, old Citadel Giant and yeah. uh, well, technically the trolls. It's, it's the old Marauder Giant. Marauder Giant, yes. Yeah. From before it was 80s. all one studio. Yeah. yeah. There was a, quite a bit missing on this preview site one then from the actual stream because there was the, um, the Bugman's cart as well that they yes they showed yes us. Bugman's. So expect to see like a massive range of dwarfs because it was one of the biggest ranges mm. back in the day. So yeah, I think all of that stuff is going to get its fair shake again at some point or the other. But yeah, that is the um, old world. Finally, we have some Age of Sigmar, mm. and obviously we've talked about the reveal trailer, um, but. Today we're going to talk about Braxia. Abraxia, the Spear of the Ever Chosen, and this is part the final part of the Dawnbringers uh, books. And this is a gorgeous model. Mm. Like that mount itself is just absolutely yeah. beautiful. The pose, just the kind of like. I'm sure this is one of those things where you could draw the like spiral, like the what's it Fibonacci sequence or whatever it's called, that thing, you know, the, like the golden ratio spiral thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is just a, a really lovely pose there. And she is just rocking it there. Yeah, <laughs> they, they've got absolute look. They've got the right level of busyness going on. Because mm. if you look at, like, Archaeon, for example, that yes. model just looks way too busy. But here, mm. I think they've nailed the balance really well. I know, yeah, yeah. It's often an overcomplication issue with Chaos. But, like, the, the armor plates, are, you know, there's a fair bit of trim you're going to be doing there. But uh, it's it's kind of limited to one part of the model. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you have like the big flesh of the beast to balance it out. Uh, oh God, 
it's just so well designed. I, I, I really love this model, and um, I believe she's coming with a box set. Did they oh, say yeah. this is a, just with the Varen Guard? I think. That's probably going to be a very good value set, to be fair, as well. Yes, yeah. And that's all with Dawnbringer's six. Now, I think I was, I was, I was that's pretty tired. Oh, the scenery piece as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. And this is gorgeous. Obviously, as a chaos player, I love this. Yeah, I mean, I, this this wouldn't be out of place in forty k either. Oh yeah, yeah. You can oh use that yeah. Quite easily. If you get this and, and aren't using the rules for it, definitely yeah. just shove it on your board as a standard piece of terrain. It won't look too out of place. So it's really nice to actually see Slice of Darkness are actually getting their own terrain piece finally as well. It's yeah, like... I think they're like fairly much last to the party. I can't think of anyone else who hasn't got one. <laughs> and there it is from another angle. So that's a very cool Dawnbringer 6. Obviously, it's uh, all about kind of um, the rise of Abraxia and, and this is obviously going to lead into the Skaven for the start of 4th edition Age of Sigmar but yeah that is all the reveals there's been a fair amount shown off and a fair amount of chaos which means it's one of those reveals that I really enjoy <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we hope very much you've enjoyed our little chat on them. Uh, we've been Bleeding Tree Gaming. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.